Hello my lovelies. So here I am. Now as many of you might have already figured out, my makeup video did not go as planned. Again. Now here's the real kicker of the deal. I got the entire video complete and was uploading it but something happened with my editor and it came back that the file was corrupt and defaulted and therefore it deleted all of my video. I mean just within I don't know minutes all of my video was gone so all of that hard work that I did to complete the look that you saw on Instagram and Twitter gone. All I have left is my picture and memories. Fond, fond memories. And well, to kind of, I don't know, back the whole experience up, what I'm going to talk to you about today while I'm all snuggled up in my peppermint candy and penguin blankie is how to deal with disappointment when you suffer from a mental illness. Now some of you may say, well, isn't that just the same as anybody else? And that's a good point. There are some points that are going to be very similar to other people, but when you're dealing with a mental illness and you have a background of physical and mental abuse like I do, some things have a more lasting effect than others. And one of my biggest struggles is that I have a background of being told you're never going to be good enough, you're never going to amount to anything, nobody's going to ever accept you. And I've spent many, many years and much, much therapy overriding that, going to college, and just different things like that to get to where I'm at. And I'm still not where I want to be, but each day I strive to get a little better, to work a little closer, to just, you know, strive a little harder to get to where I want to be. Now, my therapist, I'm not going to name him out, but he's been my therapist for many years, and I dread the day that he retires. But he's always worked with me on dealing with disappointment and at one point he came out with a bullet list and on that was five points on how to deal with disappointment when you suffer from a mental illness which like he told me this can be used on a broad spectrum of people who do and do not suffer from mental illness um you know or different mental illnesses so you know this isn't tailored to just one type of you know in my case complex PTSD this is not just tailored to those type of people this can work for a number of people this I don't want to say it's a one-size-fits-all but it's pretty darn close and some of these may sound pretty you know, general and like just common sense. But when you're like me and you suffer from, you know, issues like this and self-doubt and self-worth and self-esteem, and many of us do, you know, you don't have to suffer from a mental illness to suffer from some of these, you know, some of these problems, some of these issues in life. The number one thing I want to point out, and this is something that I struggle with, is managing your emotion. Now, I have a huge problem. Like, in the moment something happens, such as you're uploading your video and it all just gets deleted, I react with anger. It's just my go-to reaction. And you know, I do try to remove myself from, you know, little ears and go to a private place to just kind of fume it out. And I'm not going to say I get violent or anything because, I mean, do I seem like a violent person? I'm not. But I do deal with feelings of frustration, aggravation, self-doubt, anger, you know, just 
I guess anybody would, just a tidal wave of emotions. But I have learned over the years how to kind of control that, rein it back, practice, you know, breathing techniques, counting, you know, just getting in a safe place and collecting my thoughts. For me, my safe place is my bedroom. Is my blanket and you know my husband always backs me up he knows when I'm overstressed if you have a spouse who supports you during these times you are very fortunate and I know I am but you know that's the biggest thing is that first reaction how are you gonna react are you gonna overcome you know the problem or are you gonna let the problem overcome you the second bullet point is don't take it personally. Just because, you know, you have, you know, an issue in your life, something goes wrong, don't take it as a personal attack. My video getting deleted was nothing personal against me. It's just something that happens. And I'm sure many YouTubers know about this. It can happen to anyone. I mean, it's just... Something hiccuped, and my system read it as, you know, oops, we have a problem, and went, no, you can't do this. I wish its first go-to wouldn't have been to delete my video, but it was. And it was not a personal attack against me. You know, your car breaks down, it's not a personal attack against you. It happens. Cars break. It's not... It's not like, oh, well, if you had a different owner, you would have broken. No, it just happens. You know, you deal with your emotions and then you don't take it personally and you go to the next step, which would be review your expectations. Now, sometimes we set our expectations a little too high. Sometimes we set our expectations a little higher than we can achieve. I'm not saying don't have dreams, don't have hopes, don't have expectations, because that's not what I'm saying at all. But don't expect more of yourself than you can give. Now, in this case, that doesn't really apply to this situation because obviously I could have uploaded a video. Here I am. But there have been things in my life where I just expected too much out of myself. I'm not going to go into everything, but one of the things was making my marriage with my ex-husband work. I expected it all on me. Me, 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 me. I should be able to do it. I should be able to hold this marriage up. I should be able to make him happy. I should be able to save this marriage. And in the end, it shouldn't have been all on me. It should have been. And it's not a 50-50 thing. It's 100-100. And I was given 100 and he was given nothing. At that point, he was giving nothing. He didn't care anymore. He was cheating on me and he didn't care. Again, I don't say that out of bitterness or malice. I mean no malice towards them, but it's the truth. And it's just the way it is. And if any of you have been on Reddit, you know I actually posted a story there about him turning violent against me and accidentally hitting my daughter. And, you know, that was a terrible situation. I'm not going to go into it here, but if you want to... Um, you can read it on Reddit. Um, it's on, um, uh, well, it's on a Reddit page there. If any of you want to, you know, private message me, I will let you know. I, I'm not sure if I should say who it is on my video. I, I didn't get his permission and I don't want to get in trouble, but it is on Reddit. So, you know, feel free. I'm sure you could probably search my name and find it. I, I'm not 100% sure, but you may be able to. But anyway, I, I've got sidetracked. But that's one way that I did not manage my expectations. And I should have. I shouldn't have expected so much out of myself. So that brings us to the fourth bullet point. Which is take a big picture perspective. Take a big picture perspective. In other words, look at the whole picture. Step back for a moment and look at everything. And once again, this doesn't really 
qualify to uh, my video upload other than I could just say, well, overall, I wanted a video up. I mean, that's really it. But I can trace this back to, like, my marriage. My ex, you know, with my ex-husband, not my current marriage, but my previous marriage. And I should have taken a step back and said, what do I really want from this relationship? And, well, I wanted what anybody wanted. You know, love, care, respect for each other. You know, a stable home for our children. You know, just, you know, stability and respect for one another and love for one another and, of course, loyalty to one another. But anyway, um... That's where I should have looked at the big picture. And when I did it, I was just focusing on making him happy and keeping him happy during the relationship. I should have known that I was not taking a look at the big picture. But I was so young back then. You got to understand, guys. I was so young. I was in my 20s. And um, I let something slip about my age. Yes, I'm older than my 20s, obviously. But anyway, many of you knew that anyway, so I don't know why I acted like it was a big secret. Ta-da! Anyway, um, I was very young and naive and just a people pleaser. I wanted to make him happy. He was my husband. Of course I wanted to make him happy. All joking aside, I did want to make him happy. And while we're, I wouldn't say we're friends, we keep things friendly and you know, social, social. So, I mean, I'm not going to say he's my best buddy and I want to hang out with him. But I will say that we don't go to the extremes like we used to. And there has been no more attacks in a McDonald's parking lot. So there's that. Which leads me to my fifth and final bullet point, which is try again. Or try another tack. Now, in this case, I'm definitely going to try again on the makeup video. Don't give up on me, and I won't give up on myself. It's definitely going to happen. It was done today. It was uploading. Like I said, things happen. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I'm just going to pick myself up, dust myself off, and keep going. So, I want to hear from you. You don't have to tell me what you suffer with. That's none of my business. And, you know, definitely, you know, that's your right to keep private. But how do you deal with disappointment when it happens? And, of course, it's happened in all of our lives. How do you deal? Did you find any of these points helpful? And just, you know, enlighten me on, you know, maybe something different that you do in your life and how you implement to control your emotions and your first emotional response to something bad happening in your life some sort of unplanned oopsie or a mistake or you know your video being deleted how do you deal with that initial response and what is your safe place i have so many questions about that because you know Safe place has been such a common term that's been used in these past few years. And people have told of the most interesting safe places that they have that, you know, normally you wouldn't think of. So, you know, let me know. What is your safe place? All right. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And I just wanted to say I love you all. And if you like my video and you haven't done so subscribe to my channel and get notifications whenever I upload a new video. I love you all.